Hello, I'm Verdi Abusto, and this is the Schumann Resonance Harmonics channel on Facebook and YouTube and, oh, good golly, parts beyond. Um, thank you for being here. Thanks for showing up. Uh, I appreciate your being here. Um, if you're new, remember to like, share, comment, subscribe. Um, appreciate all of that. Helps me, helps you. Um, I explained all of that, the whys and the wherefores in part one of this, and uh, also in the comments, I believe, or the description, rather. Um, uh, so this is part two. I've already done part one. I'm not going to go into more of an introduction. Uh, I am going to fix myself, however, right now. Hold, please. Okay, that's better. Okay, so now that we're ready, um, I because this is going to be premiere, I'm going to um play about three minutes, three and a half minutes worth of mix. Aaron Mix, this is from the 22nd, 22nd of March, so roughly a month ago. You know, there was a batch of four of them that he made. This is an Aaron Mix vehicle. I used the mix the music as an in between between uh segments and also to give you guys a break and because a lot of you like the music so the the music it's predominant it's pretty much aaron aaron mix and this is a vehicle vessel for aaron mix so uh, you know i'm going to do an introduction song to allow some people into the premiere um and uh give me a pe chance to chat with people anyone who's there um and uh you know you know how we roll here all right so uh we've already started it was at like 32 minutes uh and uh, nice right. so on that cheery note onward and upward at uh two minutes we uh uh, we'll see you back here in about uh, five or six minutes. So.
what's wrong with you? You look good together. That's probably a good place right there. Huh. 55. Any of you that know me who know who watch me know I watch the clock on these. Uh, you know. Um as the expression, uh short, succinct videos don't happen accidentally. Uh, you meeting your time. You know, your time constraints doesn't happen accidentally. Um, being on time, that's not an accident. <laughs> being on time is something that's quite intentional and quite planned. Um, or being early, that's even more intentional, more planned, you know. Um, doesn't happen just randomly, you know, lateness, being tardy, that happens randomly. You know, random shit happens when you're running late. <clears throat> you get become even later. Anyway, onward and upward. Uh, just my experience. That's my experience. That's all. Not me preaching. That's just my personal experience. Um. Anyway. Um. So. Uh. So we're gathered here today for part two. Thank you for being here. I appreciate everyone you love and your support. Um. This is. Um. I wanted to. Uh. You know the version of this that I'm looking at. I want to be able to read from it so I can look at the camera while I'm reading. It's part of my aesthetics of doing this. It's, you know, being present for the video, um, you know, as if I'm actually talking with someone, making eye contact um, with without the glasses. Um, and so, uh, you know, so it's important. So, you know, even though I have it set up here on the other screen, it's, you know, it's important I'm able to read this here. All right. So, um, um, so I've already done the disclaimers on this, and this is um, essentially the observations uh, for those who are new. The observation series is me pretty much giving a you know run by run, blow by blow, as it were, uh, um, play by play. I don't know uh, of the um, what the heck do you call it? The uh, the spectrogram, the 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 report from Kumia, um I'm sorry, the report from R Tomsk, Russia. All right. So these here, uh, the panels. You know, what is it that I that when I'm looking at, what do I see? What what's you know, what uh, what am I looking at? And so that's more or less what this is was intended to be from the beginning. Is me just giving a you know my own personal observation my own run through on what i'm looking at when uh i see the charts you know like you know like how do i see it for myself right i think you get the picture right. so um this one here i wanted to give a little bit more in depth on not just this particular one is not just you know the current conditions are down there at the bottom this one i wanted to give an overview of a lot of the different elements that go into it including the antenna and when the majority pretty much everyone else that talks about these uh the majority of if not everyone else that talks about the schumer resonances don't give any consideration to the antenna or antenna i antenna uh, it's the plural of antenna is not antennas it's a latin word it's ends with you see it i i put a e antenna it's not antenna it's antenna all right uh, just remember that um the the americans did that uh antennas but that's not proper um antenna um, so the antennae, uh, there, because there's two types, there's the dipole and there's the induction magnetic induction coils that they have for the magnetic side. All right. So the majority of people that talk about the Schumer resonances don't talk about the antennae, antennae, uh, because they just don't consider it. They don't have an experience with it. They don't know anything about it. They don't research it. And for all intents and purposes, they believe that the Schumann is a magical device that just does it all. It just, I, I, I have no idea how people think that the spectrogram works as the Schumann without there being an antenna. They, you know, I just, this is an area beyond me because they, none of them can really give me any type of explanation. They don't know, you know, I don't, I don't know what they know. They don't know what they don't know. 
Um, they don't know, and they don't know what they don't know. Both apply. Um, so, uh, so this is partially why I did this. So we can discuss at least, you know, somewhat the antennae and its uh, operational constraints. Operational constraints. That's so the um, little closed caption machine can pick that up properly. Operational constraints. And it's important, it is important to understand the operational constraints that are built into antenna, antenna, you know, detecting devices, especially with the Schumer resonances, because it is such a specialized type of thing. It's a specialized bandwidth uh, of 0.3 to uh, about 46 hertz. All right, so uh, let me read what's here. Uh, antennae, antennas are engineered to accept only a narrow band of signals. The EMF, electromagnetic field, is a wide spectrum. You gotta remember that. It's a huge wide spectrum that goes all the way from Schumer resonances, zero all the way up, way up into gamma, which is way on the other side. That's ionized radiation. It's no longer like a frequency. It's, you know, it's in the centimeter and millimeter band. And it's extremely tiny, way on the other side, all right. As opposed to, you know, the sub, the radio, end, which is the you know sub light below light, and, um, and that's where you know where we're at here. Uh, they're built to certain operational parameters based on the conducting material, which is usually copper wires. In this case, they're copper wires. The thickness of the wire itself matters. The amount of times it's wound around or wrapped around a former, the middle of it, the former, what they wrap it around, uh, that matters. The amount of times they wrap it around, the material that they use matters. The purity of the copper itself, the alloy, if it's 100%, if it's oxygen-free, etc., that matters. Depending on the size and intensity, the size and the shape and the slope, of the radio or EMF or, you know, X-ray light or whatever that you're looking for, uh, there is um, that you're looking to detect. One has to match the type of conductor to that band of the spectrum, right? So the type of wire and copper conductors that you use um, makes a difference you know, the type of wire you use makes a difference between different types of antenna, antennae, antennas, depending on the signal that you're looking to uh, capture, right? And it's the same thing with Faraday cages, that it depends on the frequency or frequencies that you're looking to attenuate or, you know, like kind of, you know, slope off or cut off depending on what you're looking to cut off at where, what point, uh, it depends on, you know, the, you know, it, 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 what you're manufacturing depends on those frequencies. All right. I think I'm, you know, I may be <clears throat> jumbling or uh, juggling with these, the, the, the words, but I think you understand the, the, the principle that's involved, <clears throat> the concepts that are involved, that, whether it's an antenna, whether it's uh, for any, you know, AM, F, I dealt with this with the AM and FM radio, you know, even the difference between FM and AM going from a thousand to a million, the next step up, the next octave up, if you will, uh, you know, uh, uh, AM radio is a uh, killer, you know, the uh, kilometers, and uh, um, the FM, uh, uh, the frequency, um, and uh, FM, uh, frequency modulation, is a million. 
right? So it goes from a thousand to a million. It jumps up by an order of a thousand. So even in the difference between AM and FM radio, there is a uh, there's a, a a difference that where the AM antenna won't work for the FM, and you know even it, it doesn't receive them. It's a different bandwidth, right? So it's the same thing here. That if the antenna isn't designed to pick up the FM signal, you know, if it's an AM radio, it's not going to use the FM antenna. It doesn't work. You have to have the AM antenna for the AM reception, the FM for the FM reception. It's the same thing here. You have to have a Schumann resonance antenna for the Schumann resonance and not the short wave uh, and super short wave of the X-ray and the gamma. Right. And likewise, gamma and X-ray doesn't get picked up as an intelligent signal on the Schumann antennas. Right. They're not designed to pick that stuff up. Um, and so it, it, it is unlikely that those signals are having any effect on the Schumann resonance antennas that are that are designed for the absolute lowest of the low frequencies, right? I mean, because we're talking about the difference between AM and FM radio, which is what I'm, I'm, my experience is mostly with, but then we're talking about an even more subtle signal that requires an even much different or much more significantly different antenna with the Schumann resonance antennas than the AM. AM is even a, you know, a, a bigger bandwidth it's a slower wave than fm right and so even with am you still couldn't pick up the schumer resonances with a standard am antenna you have to pick up an, a whole nother antenna for the schumer resonances because it's orders of magnitude bigger than the am radio waves all right so that's really important to understand that you know even you know AM radio to kilohertz signal, all right? It is even thousands of orders of magnitude stronger and more intense than the Schumann resonances, which are pico, right? Where they're, they're, they're 12, that's 12 decibels, right? Nano is nine decibels. I explained that in here a little bit more, you know. AM is in kilohertz. So kilo, then the next one is, is, Milla, and then the next one, you know, you were talking about thousands and hundreds of thousands and millions of orders stronger and of more magnitude than the Schumer resonances. And that's why there's not this great crossover of energy. Oh, it's all energy. No, it's not all energy. It's on a continuum. It's on a spectrum. It's, you know, there's ends of it and there's, you know, wavelengths. And this is, you know, they measure this stuff up. And this is my job to bring you what is the known, what's the established science without embellishing in some ridiculous quarter that's, you know, the new age stuff. Okay. Um, and so I use the, uh, the word conductor here. I think it's important to understand that. Um, when I talk about it, uh, there's the antenna, which is the whole overall structure of it which includes insulation and it also includes leads and all of that and it's you know like you know, there's there's the antenna also includes the conductor all right but the conductor is the main part of an antenna okay uh the shielding is you know the other main part of it um uh Filtering is an important part of an antenna as well. Like that's figures in there in insulation, you know. Um, so uh, when we talk about when I talk about am here talking about conductor, uh, I'm talking about the copper wire itself, but also how the the vari variables of the copper wire and the copper connector because it can be a loop. Right, so all of the loop, how it's how many times around, uh, how the windings, the thickness of it, that's all the conductor, the 
that falls under the the heading of conductor because it's not just the wire there's a configuration of a lot of wire usually that's wound up or in some shape to get depending on what you're looking for and in the case of like in the case of like tv antennas a lot of times like it would be chrome i remember the the bow tie it would be chrome it wouldn't be copper it would be zinc maybe or chrome or something it, it wouldn't be necessarily copper uh you know put it that and aluminum is used often as a conductor as well so it's not a foregone conclusion when i say copper or i'm sorry blah, 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 blah. it's no you back up it's not a foregone conclusion when i use the phrase conductor that it is of necessity copper a copper wire in this case here because there's two types of antennae that we use one's the dipole which looks like the standard am type antenna and the other is uh like the marconi type uh the other is the induction coils which are a lot of copper that's you know a spool of copper essentially uh that's wound around a you know a former that's in a tube basically all right so um so because there's different types of antennae um uh, the phrase conductor it, it means a few different things it's of course a copper conductor but it has a few different configurations right so um you know uh generally and specifically that's what we're talking about here with the word conductor right? um that there's a conducting material and in some cases there is a conducting there is a different types of conducting materials that are put together like the new metal and the you know like this type of thing that is a conductor complex and so uh the phrase complex i think you know <laughs> describes it all um all right so uh depending on the size the, that you're looking the shape slope all of that that you're looking for the copper thickness all of that uh makes a difference all right so um in the case of the schumer resonances it's 0.3 to 40 at, at tomsk and the effective range, I have to say, the effective range for pretty much everyday uh, usage pretty much is at the 39.9 hertz mark. There's another one, one more above that, but like we never see it. You would, you don't ever see it. It doesn't, you know, the, it really just doesn't get that intense. So operationally speaking, you know, they only need to go up to 40 hertz and then cap it off, you know, to pick the Schumer resonances. They're not seismic and VLF monitoring station tops, right? That's not what they do. They're Schumer resonances, which operationally, you know, is an over at 39.9, you know. Um, so uh, these are gigantic size waves, all right? You got to remember that. There are hundreds of thousands of kilometers in size. They're... EMF, the radio, they bounce from the Earth to the ionosphere, up and down, up and down, up and down, uh, hundreds and thousands of kilometers wide from peak to peak, right? This is the lowest of the low radio waves that the Schumer resonance is, um, is in, right? It's at the lowest of the low, right? Uh, a lot of these energies, uh, oh, so, all right, so these are gigantic radio waves that are thousands hundreds of thousands of kilometers inside at the lowest end the gamma the x-ray and a lot of those other energies right if they do exist these ascension energies whatever if they do exist allegedly assumedly from what i understand those are way on the other end of the dial the gammas the x-rays all on the other end of the dial if they do exist as an actual thing they're not detectable by the Schumer resonance antennas because neither the antennas nor the spectrogram itself in that range of energy it's not detectable by any of the any of the, any of it any of the system right it's not designed to pick up any of that energy okay hopefully that makes sense to everyone
All right, the modes. What are the modes? Modes are, I've done videos on the modes. Maybe I'll do this with me an opportunity, put one of those thing, one of those little things up in the corner there. Oh, hey, over there in that video. All right, I don't know. All right. I'm still working with that, you know. If I had an editor, editor probably I'd have him do that, but I'm the I'm the editor and I'm not doing that anyway. So, uh, modes are uh, I I want I still want to do that. It's in the works. I need to do that at least one one video, put on my bucket list. You know, make the little uh, like go oh, check click the video up there. It's a card. They call it a card. All right. Um, the modes are a comparison in size and shape, the slope. Uh, between different portions of the fundamental waves. All right, so that's the originating, the you know, lightning when it flashes, that creates the fundamental wave. All right, so from a after that, it rolls around the Earth a few times and bangs into itself, That and then that's what creates the harmonics and the resonances and all that. All right, so, um, so the slope uh, is the different parts of different portions of the fundamental waves. All right, so... Um, we'll be getting into this in a little bit, All right? The modes are the color information presented on the spectrogram, right? So there's four modes. Tomsk uses four modes, um, and I'll be talking about that in a little bit, but that's essentially the coloring, right? The coloring, the four modes are white, yellow, red, and green, all right? And there's, on each one of the three panels, they break it up into the modes in four different know same same four modes each time uh, this is one of the toughest things for people to understand how the, how do you get the coloring in the spectrogram right this is the like the toughest thing for people to really get their head around right how you know how are you getting the color on the spectrogram uh so zero the baseline um there's zero or functional zero 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 is at the top of the spectrogram while the zero is at the bottom of the dependencies. The spectrogram is a mirrored image of the dependencies, this inversion. All right, so you see the zero is up here. All right, so zero, you can't see that here. All right, so hold on. Oh, please. All right, so zero is up here. Right. Zero is up here, then it goes to 40 hertz there. Whereas on the these, all the zeros at the bottom, and then it goes up, right? This starts up here, zero at the top, and then it goes down, right? Okay. And let's do that. Right. Let me get myself back. Oh, please. Okay, so you got a visual image there. All right. Um, so the zero, this is one of the difficult, more difficult things for people to kind of wrap their head around. Um, and when you look at it, you see the top of it. You know, this is something my guides kind of told me. Um, when you look at it, you see the top of it is the most intense, and then it kind of streams down. It peaks, it, it, it peaks, it spikes downwards. So... My guide said, because it's visually oriented that way, people have the natural inclination to believe it's coming from the top. It's coming from the sky, rather than for the fact that it's measured from the ground up into the air. So that's not from the sky down, it's from the ground up. Right? So this is one of the confusion people have in understanding this, is that they believe it's, you know, the way it's oriented upside down, that people believe it's the sun's output, okay? Um, uh, they have a hard time seeing that it's, you know, a lightning discharge. All right. Um, pico electron volts. All right. Shimmer resonances oscillate in the pico range, which starts 12 places, 12 decimal places before zero. All right. So you have zero words. That way it gets 0, 0.00000, and I've explained what that is down here a little bit more. All right. So, personally, it's difficult for me to wrap my head around negative volts or electron volts. All right. All right. So, this is me personally. Um, this is the concept, yet, this is the concept involved. Could you feel zero volts? no volts, zero volts, 
if it was applied to you via copper wire, you know, like that's its natural state. If you just take took copper wire, you pretty much it's by itself, not attached to anything. It's zero volts. The copper wire itself is likely it's not going to be ho likely holding a charge just by itself. A copper wire, if it's not attached to anything, it's likely not holding onto a charge. Right? It will have equalized itself out. Um, you know, even static electricity, it's not going to hold that charge. If you ground yourself out into copper wire, it, it, it's not holding onto that charge, not like that. Um, uh, once the power is turned off of, you know, copper, it's not conducting a charge, it's not accumulating a charge, it's not holding onto it. It's just, boom, it's dissipated it. So, um, uh, so the copper wire by itself would be at a zero volts, right? You wouldn't feel anything of the wire itself. Uh, and so even your, the battery charger, um, for your, your phone is a millivolts, microvolts, millivolts, you know, um, depending, uh, and, and you, you couldn't really feel that, uh, you know, five milliamps, you know, point zero 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 five. you know, you can't, you really significantly can't. Feel that your skin has a greater resistance, electrical resistance from your own electrical circuits than the, your battery charger. Just you know, of uh, of fact, uh, and I'll maybe I'll have to find this someday just to prove it's a fact. You know, you can believe it if you want. You know, if you want or not, that's fine. You know, uh, I'm just using this as a you know as an illustration for you to understand that you know there's your now i mean you know that that voltage is is small but also you have an internal resistance to outside you know atmospheric electromagnetics based on your own electromagnetics of you as a person right so that's important to understand that the shimmer resonances themselves are are fairly weak and usually of themselves aren't overwhelming your body, your bodies, your personal electrical conductivity. Right? It's on days where you have heavy electrics that are coming from lightning, right? Or from solar influence that are beyond, above and beyond the Schumer resonances. But generally speaking, the, the SR itself, Schumer resonances, is such a subtle, subtle uh, uh, force that it of itself is not doing much, if anything, to you of it of its natural self. It's just so subtle that it's not, you know, it, it's not counteracting your body's normal thing. Okay. But there's more variability, more variability to the greater electromagnetics than, than that, which are, which, which, are, which are outside of the Schumer resonances, okay? Like, that's why we talk about this. That's why I do this. That's why I'm going through all of this, especially in this video and doing this, these kind of rock bottom, back to basics videos where I explain a lot of this fundamental stuff that it's extremely complex and it's important to know kind of where one ends and the other begins, how they interact. That's important too. Um, you know, how their systems interact, but how they're, you know, also different. Um, so that, you know, you can, the average person, average high schooler, you know, like that's what this is kind of aimed for, can kind of get the grasp on, on this, the system, how it works, and also how you are a component in it and how you taking care of yourself sometimes is more important than what the atmospherics are doing, especially if you're over burdening yourself with worry and stress and not just grounding yourself when you should be. Right? Um, and so that's why, you know, that's why I'm, I'm doing this is so that you can, you know, know how to approach this stuff. Um, I'm learning as well. You know, people ask me questions. I research it, you know, like I gotta be, uh, flexible in 
you know, what I'm learning as well. All right. So, um, so, you know, it's a learning experience for both of us. Um, but, you know, one of the things I talk about is the Wi-Fi, the, the, the wireless Wi-Fi, Bluetooth. It's all very strong. It's much stronger, thousands, thousands of times stronger than the Schumer resonances. And this is a really significant thing to understand that, you know, the Schumer resonances may not be doing anything but a lot of the stuff around you may very well be and this may be with the bigger problem that people have is is not the schumer resonances but all the electronics and all the other stuff around them that they're ignoring right and i've talked about this why it's important to look at the stuff very objectively because if you put the blame or the cause on one thing then you're not looking you know you've already figured it out all right that's fine but you're not you're then not looking at the real cause you're not able to see the real cause you've already assigned the blame to this over there and now you're not able to see the real true cause the real true happening that really is going on that you should address because it's worse and it's kind of being covered over and you're not looking at it objectively you know from the science side of things when you, when you should be Right? And that's the problem with, oh, I know it, I'm all set, I'm good, I got it figured out, is then you stop looking. Then you stop getting, you know, answering the question. You stop looking for an answer to that question, and and you, the answer you have is not the correct answer, right? So that's why important, even if you have an answer, to say, all right, well, let me look at new information to challenge what I already got, right? And if what you already got is crap, it's going to not stand up to the challenge, right? And if what's being coming in is, you know, like, all right. But you need to take on new information, new information to look at it, right? And that's really important for people um, to, to, to being able to figure out what's what in these days. is just taking in new information freely, all of it as if you you had never heard of it before, never heard of the subject before, brand spanking new perspective on it. Oh, oh, what do you have? Let me hear what you got, right? I know a lot of stuff, I've heard a lot, but let me pretend I, I, I've i never heard it before. Let me pretend I'm a, a to totally, completely ignorant on this, and let me hear what you got from the ground up, all right? What do you got? All right, that's the best way to be flexible in doing this, uh, to allow you to, you know, to stay grounded in amongst all of the incoming, you know, crap, the bad information, you know, is you don't stay anchored to one, any one thing, but let me hear what you got. And then, you know, eventually it'll fail or pass of its own accord. A man is known, a worker is known through the fruits of his labor, right? Let me see. The fruits of your labor. Let me see your work. Let me see your how you put it together. I'll I'll know then when I see it. All right. Um, you know. So like I said, you, you saw the phone charge and all everything. Or, you know, the uh, your the wireless of the laptop of my laptop. I measured it. It's fifty one nano Teslas, and then it shot up to one hundred and twenty nano Teslas. It's, it's a lot. And they give me warnings, flashings, beeping. I had to turn the beeper thing off. Um, and you can get the, it's an app, right? There's a few of them, but you can get an EMF meter, uh, EMF detector for your phone and you can, you know, plug it in, uh, or what do you call it? Install it, um, and, uh, download and install it and, you know, just have fun with it, you know, go around checking around and see what comes up. You'd be surprised. I guarantee you'll be surprised. Um, all right. So I talked about the size and the scale. All right. So um, I talk a little bit here on the side note uh, about uh, Kumiania. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm still talking about the nano scale. Okay, it's important to know. All right, so side note, Earth released electrical activity at the nano scale. There's a separate issue of the strength at Kumiania in Italy, which is measuring the seismic and the atmospheric electric monitoring, right? Um, it's a different nature than the dedicated Schumann resonances. Um, these two sets of charts are not showing exactly the same information. The modes system is a relative scale 
relationship between the electric and the magnetic side, which is amplitude and quality respectively. Okay, so once again, the have um, the mode is uh, a way of measuring both the electric and the magnetic side together as a, a pair, as a team. Okay, and that's one of the things that's important to remember is that th that they measure both of these in relation to each other. Okay, just the magnetic and the electric in relation to each other at that particular moment, at that particular time. All right, whereas the when we talk about uh, Kumyania, this one here, hold, hold please. All right, so this one here on this side, this is um, earthquake monitoring. This is the seismic. This is all of this over here, uh, uh, Kumiani, and it's a different thing. And so I don't want to go too much into that. Um, I have in other places described that and talked about the monitoring. Um, here it is. Yeah, so that's the that's the um, the VLF monitoring Kumiani, which does the earthquake. Again, seismic is earthquake related. When the crust breaks, it releases uh positive electrons etc um and so it's loosely related to to the atmospheric electromagnetics of the human resonance but there's a hop a skip and a jump involved to get from the the seismic to dedicated human resonances and it's kind con complicated and i'm willing to describe it all but they're not just the point is that they're not interchangeable okay um all right uh vlf monitoring at kumiania spectrographic information includes seismic area seismic information uh which must be accounted for when you you're plotting you know you're you're sorry when you're deciphering the plotted information okay it's important to know like the spectrogram once it's done it's plotted okay that's a plotting okay the word like you're plotting to take over the government or something i don't know oh shit, shit i've said that whoops uh plotting to take over you know it's um it, uh it it is not that type of it it is uh um uh you're compiling a <laughs> i'm wondering if i'm gonna get a copyright claim on that uh demonetize for that um it's compiling a a, a, a a picture, a composition based on information that's fed into it. It it of itself is not um, detecting the signal. It's not creating that signal. It's it's plotting the uh, the the image based on what the dependency has for it. Okay, and you know what? I think this is a probably a good time to take a musical break. Uh, my tongue is getting a little tired, um, and I think I can use uh, something to drink. So, um, I'll let Cherry know. Let's see what we got here. Give it to me, uh-huh, when you come home. Oh, I ain't gonna do you wrong while you're gone. I ain't gonna do you wrong, cause I don't want none. All I'm asking for is a little bit.
Respect me, baby, when we're all alone. Respect me, sugar, when you come home. Respect me, baby, when you know it's so good. Respect me, baby, like I know you could. Respect me, respect me, me. Respect me. Just a little respect. I want, I want, and just a little respect. I come on and respect me when I'm working. I come on and respect me when I'm cooking. I come on and respect me when I'm cleaning. I come on, respect me, respect me, respect me. Respect me, respect me. Come on, come on, come on, and just a little, and just a little bit more. Respect me, and just a little, just a little bit more. Okay, yeah, it's definitely it's shifted. All right. Pull it back. Come on back. Come on home. All right. Ah, I love that, man. Okay. All right, we're back. Um, And I'm, I'm pretty much thinking I'm not going to do a two and a half hour video this time. Um, Probably closer to like an hour and a half. I'm just going to go through the... um. Um, what do I call it? The, uh, I, I've been talking more or less about the spectrogram. I'm going to go through these three, um, dependencies, the amplitude, the quality frequency, and then, uh, end it tonight. So where I put the little smiley face there. Um, and then, um, part three, you'll talk about the, the modes and go into the coloring and all of that. I think that's a good video to have just by itself. All right. So, um all right so we just played the music killed some time with the music um and i'll have a nice air mix outro maybe 20 minutes of music or something i don't know um but uh it's you know it's 11 11 23 here so that's 23 23 on the time right now <laughs> on the 27th so uh onward and upward um amplitude uh this is the electric side of the signal as measured through the dipole or the Marconi type uh, antenna. The scale is decibels of pico electron volts, which I put DB, P E V, that's what all this is, this letter salad here is. And so this is the this is the proper decimal placage of it, point zero 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 one volts. Like that's that many zeros below zero 
volts, actual zero. It's that many volts less than. Uh, that's the strength of the Schumer resonances. That's the Pico scale right there. Right, All of those zeros below zero, those decimal places below zero, is the Schumer resonances. All right. This is uh, called by technical terms the vertical, uh, well, it's Pico is both, that's the scale of both that many zeros is the scale of both the Pico Teslas, which is the magnetic and Pico electron volts. Okay, they're both in that realm. Just remember that, all right? Um, so this is called, so the, the electric side, the amplitude is called the vertical conductivity channel. <clears throat> Because that's that's the release going from the ionosphere to the uh, the Earth ground. Okay, um, and the spikes on the chart are bursts of lightning, basically, or electron um, electron discharge from the ionosphere or upper atmosphere somewhere. You know, it's basically uh, electron discharge into the atmosphere somewhere lightning that, like that that's the primary cause of the schumer resonances and that's what the amplitude chart is measuring right that's what's showing you uh so many people believe that the spectrogram is measuring or detecting bursts of light and it is not uh that is not what is being detected by the actual antenna uh it's not incoming white light it's not um, gamma, any of that, right, as I said above. Uh, the spectrogram is not detecting any signals. It is merely plotting. Okay. That's what its job is, is to plot, to, to make a picture of, to draw, to render a picture based on the dependency information. All right. So it's plotting or compiling. It's rendering a series of visual aids, a running tabulation of visual aid with the, uh, what did I say? Um, to assist with the imaging, Im imaging of an invisible source disturbance. So the lightning, the shit that you couldn't otherwise see, it's giving you a visual aid of that. Okay. Um, the amplitude. The second panel shows the data received by the dipole antenna. This is called the dependency, right? So that's the raw data that is being received by the antenna um, because it's called a dependency because it's the foundation for how the spectrogram is going to qualify, doesn't quantify, it qualifies the signal and renders it into a 3D image that you would see on the Schumann, right? So what they call the Schumann is the spectrogram. And they present just, you know, when they when the people present the Schumann, just the spectrogram, they give you that plotted, that 3D plotted image as a, oh, this is what, you know, this is what the antennas are doing, as if you could read that. Um, it's important to understand that there are two separate types of antenna that detect the Schumann resonance signals. The actual Schumann resonance has to be compiled with the spectrogram, okay? So, uh, in order for you to recognize it as such. So the first one, first antenna that I talked about is the dipole or Marconi type, okay? Um, and that's what you would see and recognize as the classic AM antenna, if you've ever seen one of those. Um, uh, uh, quality, and so the other side of that, the quality is the magnetic side of the signal, and the unit is Pico Teslas, right? Tesla's magnetic flux. The pair of the second type of antenna is the induction coils used to determine the magnetic fluctuation. Q, when they say Q on the side of it, it's not uh, the quality factor because that refers to the damping of a resonator. However, the Earth itself, they're related. The terms are related. The Earth, it's the, the, the resonator is theoretically the atmosphere, right? But it's not 
a resonator in the way that you know the it's used industrially of something uh like in your car as a resonator to get it to tune in to something and that's not what is happening here but but that's related right the atmosphere has uh the ap atmosphere has a um impedance to it okay relative to the electric circuit the atmosphere has an impedance and that's what prevents the the ionosphere from grounding out from there continually being sparks you know from the ionosphere and lightning everywhere all over the place right is that the air itself what is between the ionosphere and the earth has a natural impedance to it so the the, the quality is the measurement of the magnetic flux which has to travel through the environment which acts as a damper a resonating damper does that make sense where we get the cue from the quality there's more to it i'm giving you the thumbnail version of this okay and that's why we're gonna you know we're, uh, shortly we're gonna wrap it up play some music and then uh you know um you know call it a night so the top of your head doesn't blow off from all of this information all right so but that's how quality and the q factor are related they're not the same they don't you know but they're they're related in there somewhere and it's important to know how they're related all right so the um the next one is frequency is f uh this is measured in kilometers which are the standard radio measurement system you know unit of measuring the bandwidth you know whether it's a short wave or long wave right it's a long wave if it's kilometers from peak to peak it's a short wave if it's centimeters or you know meters uh from peak to peak in fact short wave is you know meters um you know kilometers actually uh and then they have the um even shorter wave than that um uh so um the standard radio wave measurement is uh, kilometers that's what this is um and and those the f that they have here frequency boop so when they talk about f down here you can't see it all right so that's a is amplitude q is quality and below that is f all right you can't see it here lovely um that is that refers to actually hold on oh please Oh, please, system processing, please wait. All right, there you go. Okay, so when you have the side of this, there's A, amplitude, there's Q, and there's F. All right, so that's where I'm talking about with the, this is here is a spectrogram. All right, this here is amplitude. We get the four modes, right? Green is four, red is three, yellow is two, white is one. This is amplitude, right? You see that? A1, A3, you know, Q one q3 f1 f3 all right so you you see what i'm talking about there all right okay all right so uh this is where we're at um for that this this again this is a visual aid it goes with the pictures there uh this is a video you know i'll make in here on the spot um and so i'm kind of pulling this up for you as you see it so um I, i've talked about this before this is nothing new um this is again just another run through back to basics this is all the basics of of what that is this is just introducing the parts to this all right so um uh, that'll end this one it's almost right at an hour um uh, i'm gonna play some music um and that way i don't make this one too long um and uh you know if you've got to go somewhere you know that hour is good enough um, but, you know, if you want to hang out for the music, that's fine. I'm going to be hanging on the chat, um, you know, maybe not 15 minutes, but uh, I said, I think maybe not 20 minutes, but maybe closer to like 10 minutes or something. I don't know. I, I got to go to the store soon. It's almost midnight here. Uh, and, uh, you know, we got, we got stuff to do. You know, I got I get I got to sleep, you know, at this point. Um, I don't know what tomorrow is bringing. So um, at any rate, at that cheery note, um, we have all of this down for tonight um video uh the next one we're just going to go right into talking about the modes um and go through all the rest of that and then and that before i get to the current conditions and then there's gonna be four probably four videos in the series you know uh an hour is long enough
Um, all right. So um, thank you for being here. Uh, much love. I appreciate that. And uh, I'm going to play some music and I will see you on the other side of that, I think.
messed up with the volume earlier um so uh yeah i'll have to fix that so um all right it's time about 15 minutes into this um i gotta go to the store and then hit the bed and then whatever then eventually i'm gonna fix this so onward and upward so thank you all for being here i appreciate everyone your love and your support thank you very much for uh <clears throat> being here and i will talk with you in the premiere when this comes up and um just uh, thank you everyone for being here um Bradley, Jacqueline, Pamela, uh, and the rest of you who make this worth my while to be here, who, um, you know, you're you're definitely there. You're definitely part of this. All right. So on that cheery note, thank you all very much. Namaste. There's no need to leave if I can't be